today. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala. Auto repair with person care. We know what we're talking about. Matt Gibbs and the guys over at Sunrise Automotive will be treated. Yeah, that's what I, you know, that, I love that he put that in the song. That is exactly the reason I go to Matt Gibbs and, and Sunrise Automotive, because they treat you right. And, and gosh, I've got so many stories to tell you about it. Hopefully you've heard some of them on the air. Matt is here right now. Uh, the show is called Auto Repair with Personal Care. Matt is the owner of Sunrise Automotive and Crossroad Auto Sales, both of which I'm a customer of. And uh, very happy with my relationship with Matt and his guys, professionally as well as personally. Saw him at a, 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 a spaghetti dinner the other day. Yes. Sunday. Sunday. Was that Sunday? Yeah, yeah that Sunday. Was Sunday. Sunday. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Pretty good. And I'm glad I have a new battery because this cold, we have a freeze warning again tonight or tomorrow morning. That's what I heard. Yeah. So, uh, you know, every time I crank it and it starts, I'm like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody does that, don't they? Nobody wants to turn that key and have... Did you see that ad in the Super Bowl, by the way, where the guy gets in his car and he goes, start up, and it started up. He didn't even have a key. He just told it to start up. Uh-uh, I, didn't, I didn't see that. Okay. There was an ad. I don't know what car it was. But there's two bears, and they were going. he was being chased by the bears. So he gets in his car, and he says, start up. Boom, and it goes. And the bear says to the other bear, did he just say start, and it started? Yeah. <laughs> Huh, and I didn't see that. Huh, now I don't know which car that was. But I wonder if it's voice recognition. Like, Yeah, I can see that. Technology. Like, I couldn't start it, but right, he right. could. He could. Yeah. yeah. Huh. I can see that kind of technology coming. Now, can you imagine that? Pro- you, that guy comes to your garage. Hey, I'm, I'm having a problem. My, my voice starter is not working anymore. Or he's got a cold and he won't listen yeah, to it. Yeah, it doesn't sound the same. Yeah. <laughs> Or my, my my brother wants to use my car for a week. Can you change the, the coding? Well, I'm sure you, there's a there's another way of starting it. <laughs> you think? Otherwise, you can't. I'd never be able to change nobody's oil. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to have the car start? Just don't. I don't know anything about cars. Do you have to be able to start the car to change the oil? Well, you have to get it in the shop. Oh, I see. What you you mean. know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So what is what is the rule? So we don't put water in our own radiators anymore, but aren't you supposed to keep the car running when you put water in? Uh, no, 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 well, no, yes and no. Yes it depends and no. on what we're doing here. Okay. Or well, back in the day when you would put your own water in, like right now, if you were worried about the freeze tonight and you did not have any antifreeze in your in your radiator, uh, you better put some antifreeze in your radiator. You better put it in. But then you put it in with the engine off but then you have to get the thermostat to open and circulating and top it off and yada 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 so you gotta know what you're doing yeah well yeah i mean you should know what you're doing so what i worry about that's different from the old days and i know you brought this up not too long ago actually is the difference the two different types of of antifreeze Back in the old days, it was one. You, you bought yeah, it. Yeah, right. Now there's no, now there's I don't know how many different types. Does it of still antifreeze. kill animals? Did you remember that in the old days where, where don't let, leave it around, the animals will drink it and, and die? Uh, that's yeah. They've changed it since then. It's it, uh, the original green antifreeze that we're so used to. Is, right, right. Is a sugar. Base. So you can't soak a bologna sandwich and get rid of the raccoons anymore. No, you can't do that anymore. <laughs> Now the new antifreeze is bitter. I mean, it is so bitter. So that an animal won't won't, e- won't even try it. it. It's disgusting. And I know. So did you ever have a raccoon messing your garden up and needing to take care of the raccoon? Uh, no, not or my armadillo? garden. Armadillo? I've had, no. a, I had a raccoon that was trying to get in my house, and I had to take care of that. How'd you take care of it? I had to shoot him. Oh, you did? Yeah. I wasn't happy, was it? I wasn't happy. I mean, you weren't. No, but he was really trying to real hard to get in my house. <laughs> <laughs> and the last thing I wanted was, and he was a big old raccoon. Really? And the last thing I wanted in, in my house was that big old raccoon. How so, long ago? Uh, several months ago. Oh, not too long ago. Not too long ago. That's a weird thing. He was trying desperately. How's your hand? Us. How's your wound? Looks good. Yep. Looks good. That was a bad, bad cut you had there. Yep. 
from a dog yeah. that you saved from drowning. Drowning in my pool. So now you can play drums again? I was playing drums with it. Oh, were you? Yeah. It was it was it felt weird because I, this part of my hand now is all numb. Right now it is? Yeah. And uh so, but went the stitches in there and everything. Every time I would ride on that symbol, oh, you know, it's no. like ding, ouch, ding, ouch, oh, ding. <laughs> no. But uh, yeah, I, pl- I played. Uh, I gotta go to your church one day and see you play. Hey, is that the only time I'll be able to see you play? Is in church? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. That's the only time I ever play is at church. Huh. Can you? Do you want to say the name of your church? What is your church? It's called Cornerstone. Cornerstone. Okay. It's, you know where that, sh- that sh- what do you call it, that German restaurant, that Schitzel's or yeah. Schitzel's or yeah. whatever? There's an end in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right there on 14th yeah. It's right next door to it. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. I know exactly where you are. 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Did you ever get that German food? No, I, I ate there one time and it just didn't. Was it, it, didn't, wasn't it didn't, your cup of? Yeah, it wasn't my cup of tea. Cup of schnitzel? No, the schnitzel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you, <coughs> excuse me, I. Last week, you when when we started our show, you mm-hmm. were talking about you you told a story, and the story you told was about Robin's mom, and how Philip came out. Yes, and yes. Well, when I got when I when the show was over and I went back to the shop, Philip asked me how did how did that get on the air? How did that happen? And see, and I never I've never told anybody mm-hmm. that that was Robin's mom. You, know, you follow me? Okay, right, right. So right. all the people in my office, they they, they know Robin's mom, but they right. don't know Robin's mom is Robin's mom. Okay. They just know Robin's mom is Beverly. Okay, okay. And got it. so when I came back over to the <laughs> shop, you know, <laughs> Philip is wondering how in the world did that story get on the air? How did that get on? The how did, was he listening? Is that how he knew it got yeah, on? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and I said, well, that's Robin's mom. And he goes, oh, I never, I never knew. And I said, I know you. I, Do you I, know that even says more about about the fact that he went out to help her? And that, and that is, you know, because I don't want people to sit here and they were listening to the show and gotcha, say, right. well, you know, I can, uh, yeah, well, sure, he went out there. That's Robin's mom. Yeah, you know, or right, that's Larry, right. or that's Robin, or that's Joe, or Dan. In other words, he would have done it for anybody. Would, that's and that's what he would do. That is all. And I knew that. Actually, I, I mean, I didn't know that he didn't know. That that was Robin's mom, but I know that about you guys that you'll go help anybody because you will try because you be oh oh gosh if you don't mind I'll tell a real quick story. There was a lady and she needed a car, and long story short, you gave it to her. And that's not an advertisement to say you give away cars, but this one particular lady, you remember the lady? Oh yes, with the children's group that you helped. Yeah, I mean that's and you didn't know her we didn't even really know her right she came to us asking for help right so right and was it a children's group or did she she no i think she had a child that required a lot of att- medical attention well, that she was too. going to shans that almost too. every day yeah but she does volunteer and and volunteer is an important part right, of this right she volunteers at some children's group i can't remember what it's called it's in bellevue okay and they're okay. awesome we we delivered the oh somebody gave uh, a tv Sorry, we're not talking about cars yet, but <laughs> somebody, was that a TV? I think Robin did. I think Robin donated a TV to them, and Robin and I delivered it, and they were just ecstatic to have a TV, you wow. know, just, yeah. So cars, so, so Robin's mom has a new car now. She got a, a Toyota, and uh, she did her homework, I guess, and figured out this is what she wanted, a little tiny thing, 30-something miles a gallon, she said. Yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. It'll get it'll get good gas mileage. Get good gas mileage. Yep. Yeah. Do you know what I saw the other day? I saw a Tesla. I mean, pretty blue. It was it was a metallic blue and almost looked like it turned purple when it was a different angle. And the license plate said "Ciao Gas," like goodbye gas in Italian. C I A O Ciao Gas. So they don't have any gas in them at all, huh? No. But it it took off. Oh, it, yeah. it was not a slow vehicle. No, they go pretty good. They go pretty good. Mm. And but they take a long time to charge up. And you know, and I I guess if you were now I know this, the the, the battery industry is changing almost as fast as the well, maybe not quite as fast as the computer industry changes. Um and you know, we we have a bunch of a bunch a lot of my tools are battery operated you know they're cordless right, right electric right. tools and and you know 
when they first come out, the the tool was, you know, huge, and it, the battery was huge, and the thing <laughs> weighed thirty pounds. You right, know? right, right. And now they're, you know, they have they're more powerful, they last longer, and they're a third of the size wow. because of the technology that the batteries are going through and whatnot. So you know, as companies like Tesla, you know, it's to their advantage to do a lot of research and development on the on the battery side of things. And uh, you know, and I think that if if they keep at it, they're gonna they're gonna come out and make these cars a lot more um, efficient. Um, one of the biggest issues with the battery thing, it takes a long time to charge them, and they don't go very far. So you know what I'm saying? Uh, I know Jay Leno. I was watching a, a thing on Jay Leno, and he had a he had a battery or electric um, Ford Explorer at the time. And because of the distance between his home and to the studio, it worked perfect. You know, he got in his car, he went to, right, to work, right, right. plugged it in, worked, unplug it, drive home. So, so it never was an issue to him. But to 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 make him more efficient, to where somebody can can drive and go a further distance, I think those are things that are going to be coming in the future. And, and and that's going to be something that's going to be pretty cool. Right, we'll take a little break. Uh, you, you do have a phone call coming in. For the caller, I will take the, I'll answer it during the break, and then we'll let you hang on there until we're done with the break. But we'll be right back. This is WOCA Ocala. If you'd like to call in, the number is 622-9622. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Times of clouds and sunshine on this Tuesday. Windy and cool with a high of 57 to 61. Hardly cloudy and chilly Tuesday night. Lows ranging from 35 in the coldest inland spots to 41 along the coast. Wednesday will be mostly sunny, breezy, and quite cool. High 55 to 59. Thursday, sunny and cool. High 59 to 63. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hello, gorgeous. Hi, this is Becky at Hello, Gorgeous Salon. Let's get rid of those sun damaged ends and faded out color and get into something rich and vibrant. It's time to get that new look started. So call today and set up your appointment at Hello, Gorgeous Salon, 351-5358. Hello, Gorgeous is a certified Brazilian blowout salon. We can tame those locks, leaving your hair healthy and shiny with a Brazilian smoothing treatment. And whether you're going on a job interview or out on a date, your hands do a lot of talking. Manicures are a must. Hello Gorgeous is a full service salon. So let us help you make a great first impression. Call us today to set your appointment at Hello Gorgeous. Our number is 352-351-5358. Again, that's 352-351-5358. Hello Gorgeous is conveniently located in the heart of downtown Ocala, right next to the historic Marion Theater. And don't forget, we also do men and children's cuts too. Hello Gorgeous. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall -wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Because music stirs up strong emotions, it makes it easier for our brain to store information about that event. Showering less will definitely help most people's complexions because hot showers melt away the oils that seal in moisture and keep skin supple. Dogs are man's best friend, right? But new research from Nature's Scientific Reports now shows that dogs also do nice things for other dogs. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Stay informed on everything going on in the villages with the Village Spectator newspaper. The Village Spectator is exclusively devoted to the villages with news, commentary, and more. And yes, they have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs, and all we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 804-1223 and pick up your copy of the Village Spectator today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. 
All right, 19 minutes after 10 o'clock. Uh, Matt Gibbs is here. Matt, you'd have somebody waiting on hold. Uh, good morning. Thank you for calling and for waiting. You're on the air now. Uh, good morning, Matt. This is Sonny calling. Hey, Sonny. <clears throat> Went right after, uh, well, it was just before the very end of World War II. Uh, we moved up to New York, and I, we lived down in Cherry Street in Monroe. And... Uh, I can remember the old uh, U, uh, U.S., uh, the railway, United Railway trucks. Okay. And they were battery operated. They were big, big things, six wheels, the hard rubber tires, and they had two giant battery boxes on either side. You know, it looked like uh, maybe the gasoline tanks or something like that, but they were square battery boxes. And those things ran all day, and they went around delivering packages at that time, like UPS does today. Railway Express was the name of the outfit, and uh, I, was, I was amazed at how long these car, these vehicles ran, and, you know, they ran for eight hours, well, as far as I know, and because, uh, you know, you're lucky if you had an eight-hour day back then. You usually worked uh, nine to uh, ten hours, and a lot, a lot of people still work six days a week. But anyway, these vehicles ran all day long, and they used them to deliver uh, huh. packages. And then <coughs> it was really, I, I found that amazing that, uh, you know, they could get that kind of work done with a battery-operated vehicle. But I was just wondering what you think, and I'll hang up and listen. Thank well, you. I actually had a, a, a electric forklift. Uh -huh. And and my forklift would run all day. You know, we could run around the shop. You know, we're not going to go very fast. Right, right, kind right, of thing. right. But the battery would make it allow it to run all day long. And, uh, you know, a lot of the golf carts, you know, there's electric golf carts, and they got usually have six batteries in them. But here was the problem that we had. I, number one, the, the, the battery in my, in my forklift went bad. And that battery is $5,000 just for a battery for oh, my forklift. Man. And here's Jeez. the other side of it. It weighed 1,700 pounds. <laughs> Holy cow. So a few years ago, yeah. you know, uh, when the price of lead went through the roof, um, I just I had this forklift, and I just kept it there and kept it there and kept it there, and then the price of lead goes through the roof. And some guy offers me a ridiculous amount of money for my used battery and the forklift. Now, we, we, I had to go borrow a forklift from my neighbor <laughs> over there to take out the battery out of my forklift. Oh, wow. And uh, you know, so that was one of the issues is, is you know, you get a Tesla, but where are you going to put a 1,700-pound battery? You know, this thing was probably six-foot cube. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and it was huge, you know, and, and so my thought is, is that and I hear Tesla – you know, it's a it's a nice looking, very sleek, kind of sportsy car. Looking yeah, yeah, it looked pretty vehicle. nice. Yeah. And where are you going to put a big old six foot across square <laughs> cube of, of battery? So they so they're having to, uh, you know, in a lot of the hybrids. I just I just got done working on a 2008 GMC Yukon uh -huh. that was uh, it was a hybrid, and the battery pack went bad in that, and 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 that battery literally was probably two feet wide and it was as long as the whole entire width of the vehicle it was underneath the back seats right 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 and you had to remove the rear the back seats and to get to the battery pack and there's 40 on in this particular battery there's 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 40 um dual cell batteries per cell and there's 40 of these things and and uh, I mean it's huge. It's it, you know it's it's as it's as long as wide as the truck. Right, right, right. And so you know they're the, they are as the technology goes. We're gonna we're gonna see them have a lot more uh, capacity or uh, like uh, energy capacity. Sure, yeah. And and smaller sizes, and and so as they start developing the better batteries and stuff. We'll be able to see it. It's gonna. It's gonna affect. I think it's going to affect cars as we know them. It's not going to happen anytime soon because of the the, hmm. the the petroleum and the government and the money, you know. But at the end of the day, I think I think it's gonna. We're gonna see it. 
change a lot of things. You know, and, and in a way, now correct me if I'm wrong, I think some of those drones are battery operated. And if, if batteries couldn't be light, then they couldn't be used in drones. Yeah, and, and a lot of the RC stuff, you know, we got into RC car stuff, and then there's all kinds of different batteries. I got into, uh, Joey got into racing RC cars there for a while, and then there's this, there's a, what they call a LiPo battery. And this battery, well, it was probably about that size right there. That's wow. the size of the battery. Wow. And it's probably about an inch thick. For the, for the listeners, that's uh, what, six inches by one inch or yeah, something? Or maybe a couple inches okay. and then maybe an inch wide. Okay. That battery, I went, when I went down and, you know, I'm going to buy, I want to buy a LiPo battery to replace this, this Nikon battery that it comes with. That battery is like $180. Oh, jeez. For a battery that wow. big. Wow, wow. But, man, you juice that battery up, put it in that. That race car he had. It went pretty fast, huh? You better hang on. That thing go 80 miles an hour. 80 real miles an hour? 80, yeah, 80 wow. real miles an hour. Wow. It was it was crazy. So, and and and, and then th- there's all kinds of stuff that those batteries are, they can become very unstable. You don't charge them on anything that's flammable. Matter of fact, they tell you to charge them on uh, welding bricks you know bricks that you have in a welding station yeah, 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 and charge yeah. them on that and we had an episode with one of those batteries where it's it, it swelled and and it got real 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 hot right, right, and, right. and you don't mess with that battery did it oh I, let me f- a phone call then i'll uh maybe squeeze in the story if i can good morning you're on the air with matt yes uh, this is mike hey mike i got a two old uh 2003 to bill and uh it was one of those calls cars that was Recall, uh, you know, you're going down the highway and it just stopped running in the middle of the highway. So I took it to uh, Cadillac Place. They reprogrammed the key and they did something to the ignition. But I, now I'm having this problem again. But it's a different problem. The car uh, will stop running and it will not start. All right, we've had the alternator check, the uh, start check. The battery had been in there for five years. It was a six-year battery, so uh, the DIC was reading 11.4 volts, which should have been enough to start the car. But I just replaced the battery the last the battery had gone out. Uh, the battery that was told to me had a dead cell, believe it or not, the new battery. So the uh, manufacturer, they replaced the battery. Same problem. Now, the car, if you jump it off, it'll start and run. But once you shut it down, it will not restart. You have any problem with uh, any uh, idea what this problem might be? Uh, what's causing this car not to to restart after you shut it off? I had it replaced uh, about uh, six, seven months ago. And the spark set replaced. It's a North Star engine, right? And we just can't figure out what's what's wrong. Uh, if you have any idea, I'll hang up and listen to you. Well, real quick, Mike, this is this is the first thing that comes to my mind. Uh, you know, not having a car, I can't test a couple things. But this is where I would go if I had the car. On that North Star engine, you realize that the starter is underneath the intake manifold. So the starter is uh-huh. basically inside, in, in, inside the motor. Now, Cadillac uh-huh. had a real bad problem with where the wires go inside the motor where they attached to the starter itself they had a real bad problem with them um, corroding real bad now when you say it doesn't start the engine doesn't turn over it just doesn't do anything when you turn the key it won't do any anything at all once if you if you are to detach the uh battery cables from the battery and hook the jumper cable directly to the wires or either to the uh uh, place where you jump under the hood, it'll start right up, no problem. Okay. And it'll it'll run until you shut it off again. Now, if you hook the cables to the battery and try to jump it with the cables on the battery, it won't start. Okay. Well, th- there's there's two things. There's a ground wire, the the ground wire that comes off the battery. You need to go uh-huh. follow that to where the bolt is, and it sh- there's a bolt next to the front motor mount on the front of the engine. Um, 
on the front of the car. Do, you know, the engine's in there sideways, so you want to go to the front of the car, and there should be a, a bolt that holds the negative cable to the block. You want to take that bolt out and look at it, make sure it's not getting all cor corroded. If it is, you just want to clean it up. The next thing you want to do okay. is you want to check the wires that are going to the starter underneath the intake and make sure they're not all corroded. <coughs> you're, gonna, you're having a wire connection issue. Yeah. We, yeah we, I know. I, uh, when I put the new battery in, there was some light corrosion on the positive diode, which I cleaned up, and uh, the manufacturer, uh, the supplier, came in a little uh, tube of... Uh, some kind of grease or mastic or silicone to put on there to prevent corrosion. So check those those cables all the way back to their source. And the, the cables look fine there from the battery to where they are connected. Right, right, but right. But we did not check uh, that they are uh, wires under the manifold, like you said. Yeah, you so need to go to the off. other end of the cables. Right. Sounds like a good idea. All right, thank you, Mike. We're, we're really out of time, though. Thank you for the call. Okay, thank you. Th thank you. Uh, and Matt, I would always say go to bring the car to you. Uh, what? How do we do that? What's your number? You can give me a call at 352-690-1993. Always enlightening. Thank you, Matt. See ya. We'll be right back. The guy knows the good thing about an old truck is you can treat it like an old truck, meaning however you want. Because the paint job looks best covered in mud. Dance build character.